Kathy Woodard with Clemson University Public Service and Agriculture and I'm here at the South Carolina Water Resources Conference in Columbia, South Carolina. I have with me here Ms. Natasha Bell and she's a doctoral candidate in Biosystems Engineering at Clemson University and she is here giving a presentation related to a statewide survey that you did um, related to specialty crops. You want to tell me a little bit about that? So my lab mate Lauren Garcia Chance and I uh, got together. She had a great idea to, she recognized a need in the state uh, to not only survey what specifically nursery and greenhouse growers are doing in terms of water use, but also there's a need to characterize the water quality of these sources of water. And so she and I wrote a grant um, to the South Carolina Water Resources Center mm -hmm. and we luckily got funded. And so we were able to go out and visit three different times throughout the growing season in May, July, and October 30 nursery and greenhouse growers across the state to survey their water use and to get an idea of the water quality of their source water. Okay, and so what were your findings from your survey results? Some of the interesting findings or trends that, that we saw were water source varied, and so this is something I didn't mention, is we broke up our study into three sections across the state. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to, to speak with growers um, in the, the Piedmont, the central region, and the coastal region. And we found that most everyone in the state relies on ground, groundwater in some form or another. And so many of these growers we talk to have wells installed. And depending on what they grow, this is a very diverse industry, the specialty crops industry. So if they grow trees, say in the ground, field production, for the most part we found that um, drip irrigation was what we found in terms of an irrigation type. Um, but that may not make sense for a coastal grower who's growing uh, container crops with a very quick turnaround time. Um, and so we found different practices that made sense for the area um, based on what water resources were available to the grower, what they were growing. And we also found, this being our first survey that we've ever conducted, that there's room for improvement in terms of how you phrase certain things because certain terms that come naturally to, to Lauren and I and other academics, you know, of course won't, won't be in the wheelhouse or the toolbox of um, some of these growers and so phrasing was very important so we we recognized how lucky we were to not only be able to distribute the surveys to these growers but we were actually able to go to each of these sites and kind of confirm what they had told us in their survey with what we were seeing with our eyes you know there uh, on the property. So as a doctoral candidate um, that speaks in a kind of an academic language um, how difficult was it to begin to to try to communicate what you were trying to do to, to laymen or to people sure. who, who aren't, you know, academics by nature. Yeah, I think we got lucky because we've gotten a lot of training. We work with uh, Dr. Sarah White mm -hmm. in Plant Environmental Sciences, and she's leading this multi-university uh, USDA research team. Mm -hmm. And so over the last few years, this is our fourth year, over the last few years, we've been able to get experience, you know, and gain knowledge and, and see examples of our um, the mentors on this team and how they approach these issues, how they talk to growers. And every single year when we meet for our annual research meeting, we take field trips to op nursery and greenhouse operations and, and we see you know, how, how our mentors are communicating with these growers. And so we've gotten a great example. And so for us, it may not have been as difficult as, as it would have been for someone just starting out, not, not knowing much about the field. So we were lucky in that sense. Um, but we did see a couple of cases where you know, some of the growers weren't sure maybe what rainfall collection meant or weren't sure what classifies as surface water. And so to us, it's just a learning, uh, something that we've learned from in order, you know, in, in terms of what our next survey will entail. And, and so it'll get better and better each time. Oh, I'm sure being able to go out and talk to them face to face helped tremendously. Definitely, yeah. absolutely. It, it yeah. meant a lot to them too. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. So you mentioned to me earlier that this was not in line with your dissertation research, that this was just an, an idea that the two of you came up with that was not really part of um, your professional path, as you would call it, as you were saying. So tell me what your dissertation research is in. Sure. So I'm, uh, as you mentioned, in biosystems engineering, and I am basically studying. Um, what are ecological sustainable remediation technologies that we can deploy at uh, agricultural productions to remediate their runoff water. And so uh, right now as a PhD candidate, I'm focusing on Phytophthora, which is a very prevalent um, agricultural disease. And um, I'm looking at floating treatment wetlands, um, subsurface bioreactors, which are literally just trenches that you fill with wood chips. Um, 
how are these systems that are very uh, sustainable and don't require much energy, they're very cheap to install, can we install these on growing operations you know, across the state? Will they effectively remediate things like nutrients? Um, this, this pathogen I'm working with, Phytophthora, um, pesticides. And so uh, that's kind of the overall focus of my research is what are ways we can use sustainable options to remediate agricultural runoff water? Well, that will help solve some of our critical needs here in South Carolina. So Definitely. we're glad you're working on that thank problem. Thank you. For us. Yeah. So thank you for your time today. Thank Natasha. you.